Good morning, good morning, everybody. Joe Chacho here. Hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. We've got uh, Michelle on the call today from Royal Neighbors, who is the regional account sales manager. She, she takes care of all the things for us. And uh, asked her to be on the call again to go over their um, jet issue term and whole life. I've seen a whole lot more agents use it. A whole lot more agents are, are liking it very, very much. So, Michelle, are you there? Okay, Jay's going to open you up. Hello, good morning. Michelle? Good morning, good Hello. morning. How was your weekend? Good. How are you? Doing very good. Just uh, over here going about 97 miles an hour right now. So I'm just all excited about having you on the call today to tell us about everything. I've got a bunch of agents on the phone. I've got a lot of new agents on the phone that were dying to hear what you had to say, how they can start using it. Because what they like about it is the minimum amount of only fifty thousand dollars, and you can combine the whole life and the term into one policy. So, with that said, I'm going to let you take over. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, well, good morning to everybody. I just wanted to talk about our jet that we have. So we do have a jet term and jet whole life, um, as Joe mentioned. So our jet term is fifteen, twenty, and thirty year. And our minimum for jet term is 50000 So our jet whole life, we have lifetime pay and we have 20 pay. We do have that for use for, eight, um, for amounts, face amounts of 10000 to 49000 And our minimum for jet whole life is actually 25000 So the underwriting, we have two different ways that we underwrite our jet. So our jet is an EAP. So you are going to be completing an EAP for both of these processes but we have accelerated and we have fully underwritten. So accelerated, anytime it says accelerated on this chart, which I'll send out to Joe after the call to share with everyone, anywhere where it says accelerated, that means while you're sitting with your client, you are going to get a decision at that time. So for example, um, if you want to write $250,000 in coverage on somebody up to the age of 60, we do allow that to be accelerated. So sitting with your client, getting the decision. We also go up to $500,000 for a face amount up to age 50. So if you have somebody who is 45 years old, wants $500,000 in coverage, you can get them that coverage by completing our EAP, and you get that decision at the end. So we want to make it easy for the client. We want to make it e easy for you as the agent when you're writing Royal Neighbors as well. So that's our accelerated. So accelerated means the information that we get on the application is what we're using to make the decision. Then we also have our fully underwritten. So this is really great for anybody who works with seniors, um, somebody who is somewhat healthy, um, healthier than our final expense product, that they actually can do fully underwritten with us. So fully underwritten does mean that your client does have to do the paramedic exam, um, but they're going to get a great rate. That is one of the nice things about our Jet Whole Life um, specifically is that you are going to get a really great rate for that client. Um, but they do have to do that paramed exam. So just keep that in mind. Jet term and jet whole life, um, when you're looking at our chart, it says accelerated. That means you're going to get the decision while you're sitting with your client. If it says fully underwritten, that means you're going to complete the EAP, and it's going to get transferred to Royal Neighbors for us to do our underwriting. The nice thing there, you don't have to do the paper application, go fax it, wait for it to get submitted. It makes the process go much faster for you as an agent. Um, we do have a quoting software, and this is available through our agent website. So the quoting software, um, you're going to put everything in that you need to make the decision, and it's going to give you a quote. The other nice piece of this is that you hit e-apply from the quoting software, and it's going to automatically populate your app for you. So you're not having to retype that or re-ask your client for that information. Everything is already going to be there. You hit a button, and it's going to pop over into your application. So you're going to go through, we have it, I would say, where it makes it pretty easy. You just go one tab at a time. So you start up with the insured. Fill out everything we need to know about the insured, and then you go all the way down to the end, which is the payment. So one of the things that I like to stress with the JET products, the payment does come out right away. So as opposed to our final expense, where it's 45 days out, the payment for JET is the same day that it gets issued. If it is a fully underwritten case, the agent 
um, and the client are able to put a draft date on there that can be drafted at that time. So the pool under written is a little different. The accelerated as soon as it's approved is drafting that day. So just keep that in mind. We do allow for combo application like Joe mentioned. So that's our term plus our whole life. So we have it to where it pops up like a split screen and it says, okay, what term do you want? So you pick what amount of term, 10, or 15, 20, 30 year, and then the face amount. And it's gonna put the premium at the top so you can see the premium. Then you can go over and do the whole life side. So the nice thing about that is that you can say, okay, my client has uh, $200 to spend. How am I gonna split this up to be the best for my client? You know, whole life is more expensive than term, but I wanna make sure that I get them enough whole life because you know the term is only for so long before it goes away. The medical questions. So a final expense in order to get approved, you have to say no to everything unless it becomes graded. I'm not gonna go into that, but it's different with JET. Um, with saying yes. So you can say yes to something and have it still get approved. So for example, does your client have diabetes? Yes. Great, we have a few questions to ask you. Just because they have diabetes doesn't mean they're declining with us. We have follow-up questions we're gonna ask. And these are the types of things, um, somebody who has anxiety or depression, that's one of our questions. Um, they would need to say, yes, they have that, in order for us to be able to ask the drill down questions and get the information we need to make the decision for your client. We do find that like anxiety and depression are probably like the number one things the clients will not admit to having during this process. So if you look at their medication and you know already that one of those medications, because I know agents are like doctors, they know what all the medications mean typically, just make sure that you're, you're having the, those conversations like, okay, so we're going to go through the application and, and just make sure that they're really answering truthfully because if not, it's going to get referred to underwriting and then it's most likely going to be incompleted because we didn't get the information that we need. But again, the nice thing with the accelerated is you're going to get a decision while you're sitting with your a client. You're going to get that approved. You're going to get that referred to underwriting, um, hopefully not a decline, but if it is a decline, that pops up as well. We do have uh, preferred rates all the way down to substandard for term and whole life. So if you quote your client say um, you think they're going to be preferred, but they don't get preferred, they get standard. You actually don't have to start over. We have the amendment built into the process, so it lets you go back and update. So again, your client still had that $200 to spend. You hit update. It's going to take you to the main screen and let you play around with the face amounts so you can get what you need for your client um, with the $200 and that standard instead of the preferred rate and then you hit accept. The client says, you know what, nope, I'm sorry, that's just, that's just too much. I think I should be preferred, whatever their reasoning is. Um, you can hit withdraw the application and you can withdraw at that time as well. So we do have a few options there for you. Um, it's really easy to get to our eApp. You're just gonna go to our agent website and in the bottom right corner, it says Jet eApp in big letters. You click there, and then on the second screen it brings you to, you hit submit an application. So we try to make it really easy for the agent to be able to find that while they're going. Um, let's see here. Um, as we're going through the beginning part of the application, uh, it's verifying information on the applicant. So we're gonna verify all the information. We're gonna look at their MIB, their prescription history. That's how we make the decision when we are doing the accelerated. That's like I said, it's very important to answer the questions so that we can ask those follow-up questions to get a decision for your client. Um, we do run a, val a validation check to make sure that your client is who they say they are um, because really this is, again, they're just signing something. We're not ever getting that, that paper copy in with a signature or anything like that. We're just getting everything done electronically. Um, okay, hold on, I'm just going through here. I'm gonna get to the part um, I talked about anxiety and depression. The other questions that we find that people say no to um, are diabetes and chronic pain. I did the example of diabetes. So they're gonna ask, um, if they say, yes, I have diabetes, we're gonna ask them what kind of diabetes they have. So then we have some different questions that we're gonna ask them. And it's the same thing with any of the other um, questions, but just diabetes 
anxiety, depression, and chronic pain are the, the common questions that we find that people say no to when they really should be saying yes. And we know they should say yes because we can see their medications when it comes in. Um, unsigned applications. So if you start an app, it will stay in your inbox for 10 days. But if you don't do anything with it, that does get deleted. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to start applications before you see your client, um, you're collecting some information in advance. It's only going to stay in your inbox for 10 days. Some of the other questions, um, who should apply for jet products? I would say typically it was really designed for people maybe under the age of 50 who are in good health, but we honestly have lots of seniors who get approved. Um, I have a, a group that I work with, and they've been writing a lot of Jekyll Life, and it's all seniors because that's all they work with. Um, and he was actually very surprised that people were getting approved. And these are his clients are all in the age where they have to do fully underwritten. So they're doing their paramed exam. Everything's coming in, and they're getting approved. I don't think he's had any declines yet. So that's just the nice thing is they, they designed it to try to make it um, – for, for younger ages, but it really works for all of our clientele that we have with Royal Neighbors. You're probably going to get a little bit of a better rate for somebody who's younger, but if you're looking at whole life compared to final expense, the whole life is great pricing for your clients, so just keep that in mind. The process isn't really like our final expense. Um, again, you have the yes, no with final expense. That's how you know. But we're really looking when we're doing the jet, we're looking at, we look at driving records, we're looking at things that match up medications to the question. So it's a little bit more of a process. Um, but we also have things built in to where we're able to make that decision to get your client a preferred rating. So if you apply for standard and it comes back preferred, we're going to offer you preferred. We're not going to say, oh, well, he said he wanted standard, so we're giving him standard. That's not how that works. There's no phone interview. Everything is done electronically. So that is the nice part. Um, diabetes, too, can be insured. You should call for a risk assessment. Anytime you're not really sure about a risk, um, about a health condition, I recommend just calling and talking to an underwriter. They sit right outside my office. I hear them talking to agents all day. They're great. They're going to ask you maybe um, like when they were diagnosed, how old they are. They're going to ask you what type of medication. But then they're able to kind of put everything into the, like their system and tell you, yeah, that client's going to be okay. Maybe that client's going to be rated based on the information that you're providing to them. Uh, we do have a build chart now for our jet cases, and that is in our field underwriting guide. So that is something that you are able to access on our agent portal. Anytime. We don't have a drugs knockout list for our jet process. Um, I do have some things I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment that are kind of knockouts with us, but we don't have a knockout list for our drugs, our prescriptions right now. If you start an application and you don't finish it, you can definitely go back into it. I talked about how it stays out there for 10 days. But if you are sitting with your client and then like a month later you want to go back, um, you're definitely able to do that. It's not like, well, nope, Joe already started filling out an application for Susie, so now he can't do that for 90 days. We don't have any kind of type, time period or anything with that there. Some medical, medical conditions that are not accepted. Um, so if your client is applying, these um, history, history of the following will most likely result in a declined application. Again, if you are iffy on something, just call and talk to one of our underwriters. They're great. Um, I'm just going to, there's a whole list, but I'm going to read out kind of the more common ones. Um, alcohol or drug abuse, bipolar disorder, um, chronic pain. So it really depends on the chronic pain because if we get the information that we need for the chronic pain, um, sometimes we are able to make an offer on that, so just keep that in mind. Um, diabetes type 1, emphysema, COPD, um, kidney dialysis, kidney transplant, leukemia, stroke. So those are kind of like the main ones that I see. Um, any type of a stent or bypass um, that popped up on here as well. So again, I just feel like it's helpful to call and talk to underwriting. Um, we do 
have some enhancements that we are currently working on for our JET process. Um, we do realize that agents sometimes have a hard time getting through some of our questions at the end to authenticate the client. Uh, we were hoping that we would be able to make some adjustments in July, but it did get pushed back to August. So in August, we will have a way for those applications just to come over to us. So instead of you sitting with your client and getting frustrated and locked out because they couldn't answer the questions, uh, what will happen is it will get referred to an underwriter and then they're going to be able to review those applications. Um, and my understanding is that they will do like a voice signature so they can call your client um, depending on if you got through the signatures or not. Um, they can call your client and just do something over the phone with them to get that approved as opposed to you having to go back out to your client, client to do an amendment or something like that. So anytime we do any type of update, we're always trying to do it to the benefit of the agent. We don't want you to have to be out driving around. We don't want you to have to keep going through application, application, application with your client. Um, we want to make it as easy as a process for you and for the client. So. Um, I, that was a lot. I think I just talked for like 20 minutes <laughs> straight. Jill, any questions? Michelle, can you hear me? Oh, yep, I can hear you Michelle. now. Michelle. Okay, yeah. thank you, because I have my headset on. Um, if anybody has any questions, do me a star two. I've got a couple agents that have already texted me. i got the Monday morning blues. They don't want to talk. Um, anybody have any questions, do a start too. Jay will open you up. Michelle, you ran through a list of things that were not acceptable. You said type 1 diabetes. For, for me to understand type 1, type 2, you've got child onset, you've got oral, you've got the shot. If I have a client mm -hmm. that I'm going to go visit that is a oral, they do a metformin pill only, okay, height, weight is in check, you're going to hit yes to diabetes. You're going to have a little drop-down box mm -hmm. that the agent will be able to ask the questions. Do you have a cheat sheet for, like, bipolar drop-down, I mean, I mean diabetes pop, mm -hmm, the diabetes drop-down box, the bipolar drop box, or the, or the chronic pain, rather? Do you have a little sheet that they can look at so before – they start getting on the application, the client can give them that information? I do not have that. Um, I have it for diabetes. That's the only one that I have the drop-down questions for. Um, okay. The drop-down questions for diabetes, we are, we're asking what type you have. Um, okay. So it says type 1, type 2, impaired glucose tolerance, or gestational diabetes. So it's going to ask you what you were diagnosed with. Um, and it's going to ask when you were diagnosed. And are there any other conditions um, or complications that are attached to your diabetes? So um, any, you know, any issues with your kidneys, eye problems because of diabetes, um, you know, tingling in your feet and your legs, that type of thing we're going to ask. And then how often you go and see your uh, doctor for checkups. So those are, type, those are the types of questions. But the client have, is an um, insulin diabetic. I'm sorry, I thought you were through. So type one, so type one is insulin dependent diabetes, and that is the one that came okay. up on the list that is most likely a decline. So type two okay. is the non-insulin diabetes, and that is the one where, um, depending on the rest of the information we collect, we're able to make a decision. Okay, okay, okay. I got another question for you. Mm -hmm. If an agent writes a client on your JET whole life, and they mm -hmm. are not offered a program, can they go and write them a simplified issue whole life? So um, it depends. Yes. If they're declined, okay, if they're declined because of some type of a condition, we are able to see that if they apply for final expense. Um, typically. I honestly, Joe, I see more cases that are incompleted than are declined for our debt process. Okay. And it's because the client's not providing all the information they need. So if it gets referred over to us and we aren't able to make a decision, they can absolutely apply for our final expense. Um, okay. Depending on what it was. So JET and final expense are different, so there are some circumstances where they would be able to apply for a final expense if they were declined for 
Jet, just depending on what it was for. Okay, good, good. Jay, anybody got any questions? Okay, I've got Abdul's got his first hand up. Abdul, you're on the air. Good morning. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm uh, in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I wrote a yes, policy sir. yesterday on uh, Jet World Life, and uh, I did the diabetes part. But uh, I wanted to put something on the comment side, like the prospective insured uh, chew cola nuts. So I don't know where to put it, and I don't know mm -hmm. if the accidental death rider is also included on the on this policy. So you, you completed the application already, and then you're asking if it has the accidental death? Is that what you're asking? Yes, I've not submitted it yet. I mean, I tried to submit, but uh, we missed one of the flag questions in order to send electronic. And uh, I wanted to send it and call in and uh, said, I don't see on the notes, like the agent's notes, where you can write your own comments when you do uh, jet uh, world life. It's not include, you can't include comments on our jet. So the information that you're typing in is the information that we are going to use to make the decision. So there's not a place for you to make comments. Okay. Well, what about the rider, the accidental death rider? Will that be the rider the is, yeah. yep, it's on the plan tab. So when you are filling out the application under plan, um, you select the product and the face amount, and then riders are available. So that's where you would click accidental death as one of the riders. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. Abdul, very good question. Okay, Jay, who's next, Jay? Okay, we don't know who it is here. The number ends with, uh, what is it end with? 7953. 7593, you're on the air. Okay. When you are um, a senior, what age is that called for jet issue that you have to have a paramedic? So it depends on the face amount. Um, so let's just say, so um, 50, so anything 61 and above is a paramedic exam for a senior. If you're six, okay. if you're writing up to 250,000, um, up to age 60 is an EAP, so you can still do the EAP for your client without having to do the paramed. But anything over the age of 61 or 61 and up is going to be a paramed exam. Okay, you do the EAP and then you ask for the paramedic. The you do the EAP, it gets referred over to underwriting, and then we order the EAP or the um, the paramed. I'm sorry, we order the paramed at that time. Okay, and then is that, uh, what is JET about it? At that point, it's not JET. It's considered fully underwritten. So we have the we have the accelerated is, all of the accelerated cases are what make it the JET so that you're getting the decision while you're sitting with your client. The fully underwritten okay. is fully underwritten. Okay, so then it could be up to 45 days? It does not typically take 45 days. It really honestly depends on how quick your client schedules their paramedic exam. So once we get it, the paramedic exam is ordered right away. Um, typically, they reach out to your client within a day or two of that of the app coming into your office. And so as soon as they schedule it and we get it back, um, that decision is made within one to two days after that. Okay. So it just really depends on how long it takes your client to do the paramed. Sometimes people schedule it the same week. Sometimes people go on vacation, so they schedule it when they get back from vacation. So, All right. Michelle, I got a question to uh, follow with, with what she just said. What if the agent is an aggressive agent and they don't want to sit and worry about the client uh, receiving a phone call to do the paramed. Is the agent allowed to do a paramed when he's at the house with the client and then send something to you guys saying, I've already called up exam one or apps, schedule the paramed already to let the client know exactly when it's going to be done? Oh, in our, in, during the contracting pro process on the contract, uh, it actually asks you if you want to order your own exams or not. 
So if you do mark yes, I do want to order my own exams. We do have vendors that we use, um, and as long as you let them know you're doing it for Royal Neighbors, because we have a separate process than others do, um, they are able to complete it if you request it. Okay. So then our Does that your question? knows because it's... Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, who's that, Jay? Okay, I got another text question coming in. Can we know that on the uh, simplified issue, the insured must be the owner and the payor as of today for the simplified issue with the point of sale with you guys? On the jet issue, whole life and term, can the insured have somebody else make the payment for them? Yes, um, they do have to be present when that is happening, though. Like the application. Okay, so process. if I'm going to have my wife have the money come out of her account, she's got to be there to sign the necessary paperwork on the iPad, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And just to follow up with what the uh, young lady said just on the last question, the JET issue is anybody up to age 60. Anybody over the age of 60, 61 plus, is an automatic paramed, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Here's another one. You said this answer here, but I didn't understand it. Today's the 15th. Okay. The client says, you know, Joe, I don't want it to start till next month on the 3rd. I convinced them to start it on the 15th. Okay, they, they're going to get drafted today or tomorrow. Can the client change that draft date from today so it comes out today and then for the next times after that there, can it can be changed to the third on the application? Yes. So but let me explain that in detail. So if your client – if it drafts today on the 15th and then in August they want it to draft on the third, that's okay. If they have a draft today – which is the 15th, and then in August they decide they want the 28th as their draft date. They cannot do that because it has to be – it has to stay current. So they can't pick a draft date that is going to cause them to draft um, past due. So in other words, they got to have it 30 days from the actual initial draft of the 15th. So they can do it all up to the 14th of the following month. Is that, is that correct? Correct. Yes, and you do what you get okay. to select a draft date when you're doing the process. It's just that it's the first payment draft that day. So I just want to make sure that agents are aware of that, that it is going to draft the day that it gets approved. Um, and they do get to pick a draft date, but it just has to, you just want to make sure that the draft date is, you know, what the client wants and so that's not going to be like a past due of a draft date. Okay, I got it. Anybody who's got any questions, do a start two. Jay will open you up. I got another text that came in. <clears throat> He's got a client who is 55 years old. They're an oral diabetic, started it when they were 49. They got high blood pressure medication and cholesterol medication. If you know, is that a candidate for the JET issue term? Uh, that's a candidate to call for a risk assessment. That's not that's not something. Um, whenever there's a combination of more than one medical condition, I would definitely recommend calling over and talking to an underwriter. Okay. So we want them to call your toll-free number. When somebody mm -hmm. answers, just tell them to ask for underwriting. Yep. Um, you actually, when you're going through the process, it, um, you select that you're an agent, and one of the, the cues that pops up is to do a risk assessment, so then you get to talk to one of our underwriters. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Start two. Jay will open you up. Off the top of your head, Michelle, what is the uh, what is the uh, answer on somebody with a heart issue? Somebody had a heart attack on your simplified issue. We know you go back two years in their uh, okie dokie. Can a person have had a heart attack five years ago and get the Jet Issue program? I, you know, um, I think it is possible. It's really just going to depend on um, their health now. 
Um, are they, what type of medications are they taking? Is everything under control? Um, you know, are they having to have like nitro or something? So the unfortunate part um, is that sometimes when, when questions like that pop up, it's really just best to ask somebody in underwriting just so that you know. Um, and they're going to be completely honest with you. So if they think that it's, you're not a good candidate for JET, they will say, you know, I can look at final expense for you, or they will recommend that you write that client with a different company. So they're not going to just tell you to write it with us and have it get declined. So they are very honest, and they will ask you follow-up questions because they really do try to get a good decision for you so that you know what to do for your clients. If an agent calls up and asks for a risk assessment, and they say the client had a heart attack five years ago and they're on a certain medication, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. If the underwriter is not pleased with the amount of information that the agent is giving, will the underwriter ask the agent to ask the client, I need to know this, this, and this, or does the underwriter base her decision on only what the agent says? Uh, this will ask you, you know, I mean, if they don't think they have enough information to make a decision, they're definitely going to say, like, hey, you know what, um, if you could get me this, I would be able to get a better decision for you because, okay. you know, you can only make a decision on what you have, right? So the more information, the yes. better. But, um, no, they, I mean, I think our underwriting team is great. Like I said, they sit right outside my office, and I hear them talking to agents all day. Um, and I know that sometimes they've said, well, if you could get me this, I'd be able to make a better decision. So I always tell agents, um, make sure you know the age of your client. 